I enjoy just looking at the trees, looking at people and so forth. So I think um, that it's very important that every city have a variety of parks. I come down here a lot. I've lived in the neighborhood for 29 years and I come down here and probably hear eight to ten different languages spoken in the course of the day. Uh, I like to get exercise. I come and walk and get my exercise and sunshine. It's a lot of fun. Here where it's more about the people. It's just anywhere you go you can find a space. It's very relaxing and the squirrels are fun to feed and there's ducks. But I don't, don't think you can feed them because they're Canadian geese. Sometimes when it's 5 degrees and the water's almost frozen, there's ice everywhere and just a little bit of water here. There's no water right there, swimming with no problem. Then they fly home in the afternoon. I think a lot of the time we're super caught up with our lives and like running around doing school or work and stuff and we don't get outside and see what's around us. Going out into nature gives you time to reflect, it gives you time to be with yourself gives you time to think through things and also you get like fresh air and you maybe get to see an animal or something. Sometimes people don't even know that there's nature places close to them like here in Worcester we have places you can hike or walk around that you can take the bus to but I think people often don't realize that they're so close and that you can do that. We live in a city and we don't have a lot of room. So in many ways, open space is our common backyard. If we want to go outside, if we want to go for a run, we want to go for a walk, we want to barbecue, there are a lot of people who have no yard whatsoever. And the Greater Worcester Land Trust is sort of our common backyard. There are very few people who are donating land or giving it away. Uh, and that means we have to buy it. And buying it is expensive, particularly in an urban area. There's an expression that the Fields are ripe and the workers are few. There are more opportunities to preserve land or to improve land or put out trails or do habitat work than there are bodies to do it. And that's why we've come to rely on volunteers. It's the only way to even have any hope of getting enough work done. Most of our open spaces can be accessed by a WRTA bus, particularly because the buses now have bike racks on the front. Uh, and that's great. I'll say that the Cascades can be accessed by the number two and the number six bus. I'll say that Broadmeadow Brook can be accessed by bus. So the city of Worcester is also blessed with giant wildlife just wandering into our streets. Uh, you'll notice that in the last year we've had at least three instances of moose. Uh, there have been two or three instances of bear that I can remember off the top of my head. In the old days they'd walk around the city where there was open space, but suburban development has eaten up those quarters and now they end up finding themselves in downtown Worcester. And it's neat partly because people don't think of wandering around the city and having a, a koi wolf or you know, you know having a bobcat and yet you know increasingly with social media people can look around and say oh my lord the city of Worcester has crazy wildlife wandering around in it all the time. So Worcester's uh, a location where we had, uh, you know, beginning really in the 1700s, but especially in the 1800s, uh, a huge explosion of population, primarily because people came to work in the mill towns that were established um, along the Blackstone River. Over time, when the mill towns sort of declined and the industry declined, a lot of those waterways were actually abandoned, um, are really kind of, you know, not managed well and then eventually just covered up. So um, in our city, most of our rivers now are underground. They're flowing underneath roads or culverts and so on and so forth. Climate change has a lot of impacts, um, especially in coastal cities, but not exclusively in coastal cities. So even in inland cities, um, because of climate change, a lot of people are exposed to things like heat waves. Um, you know, in the summer particularly, and that's where urban tree canopy cover or just access to water uh, and other amenities can really lower the urban heat island effect and help buffer against some of the impacts of climate change and extreme climate events as well. We see also a lot of studies that have come out that kind of point out how people's you know, blood pressure actually goes down when you have, you know, trees outside, right? Or kind of, you know, some form of nature outside that you can connect with.
Mass Audubon came to Worcester in 1985, interested in doing more in urban areas because we're a statewide organization and most people in the state live in cities. The biggest issues in the mid-80s was that open space was being gobbled up really fast. There's a lot of development going on. Here's an example of one of the beautiful open spaces that was remaining in Worcester in the mid-80s. Mass Audubon was able to acquire a key piece, a 15-acre piece, that connected into all that area you just saw. We were able to work out agreements with the city of Worcester, who owned some of these other parcels. So in 1991, the Broad Meadowbrook Wildlife Sanctuary was born. So if you think planning is a waste of time, you're wrong. <laughs> planning and having a good open space and recreation plan and then getting people around it working together really pays off, or it sure has in Worcester. being interviewed by John Monahan from the Telegram and Gazette, and he asked me a question as I was working on trails up at the airport, how this compared to the Grand Canyon. And I remember getting really, really angry, but, but not at him, uh, just that, like it didn't compute, wasn't right. Uh, so I tortured myself for 15 years to come up with an answer, and the answer is, this is where we live. Uh, this is where we grow up, this is where we play, this is where we spend every day. The Grand Canyon is a place you visit. If you're born in the city of Worcester, the odds of you actually making it to the Grand Canyon beyond just seeing it like in a National Geographic are really pretty low, whereas this is the stuff you live with every single day. And so in many ways, this is just completely different. And in some ways, it might even be more important.